Oregon's Klamath Mountains are bordered on the north by the Coast Range, on the west by the Pacific Ocean, on the east by the Cascades, and to the south by the Siskiyou Peaks, a component of the Klamath Mountains on the Oregon-California border. Mountains that dominate the province include the 9,000-foot-high Trinity and Salmon Ranges of California, including Preston Peak at an elevation of 7,300 feet, Mount Ashland at 7,500 feet in Oregon. Both are in the Siskiyou Mountains. Only the Rogue and Klamath Rivers reach entirely across the province, following a winding course from the Oregon Cascade to the Pacific. The major tributaries of the Klamath River are Shasta, Scott, Salmon, and Trinity Rivers in California, and the Applegate and Illinois Rivers in Oregon. The third largest watershed in the province is the Chetco that heads in the Kalmyopsis Wilderness then flows southwesterly to meet the ocean at Brookings. The Klamath Mountains are a north to south trending physiographic province. The Klamath Mountains encompass about 11,800 square miles and roughly form an outline from coastal Oregon at Port Orford, northwestward to Roseburg, south to Medford, then across the border to Redding, California, where the boundary bends southwest to northwest to the coast at Point St. George. It measures 250 miles from its northern tip at the uh, southern extent of the Willamette Valley to its most southerly tip near the northern extent of Sacramento Valley of California. The Klamath Mountains are composed of accreted terrains that were originally crustal slabs or volcanic archipelagos during the early Paleozoic to Mesozoic. Cretaceous seas covered western Oregon, depositing sediments in a large forearc basin. Regional uplift of the Klamath Mountains shifted the shoreline north and westward. During the Pleistocene Ice Ages, only Chetco Peak developed, during, uh, developed glaciers in Oregon. Most were restricted to higher California Klamath Ranges. Elevation of the coast during the Pleistocene and Holocene produced stair-step terraces. A long history of ocean basin rifting, faulting, and the intrusion of terrain rocks has enriched the province with a diverse assortment of economic minerals. Major terrains of the Klamath Mountain province from the oldest in, in the southeast to the youngest to the northwest. The oldest of the terrains were assembled during the Vindian or Ediacara period of the late Paleozoic. The Klamath region grew progressively when rocks of oceanic origin assembled a distance offshore. As the volcanic island slabs were rafted eastward during the late Mesozoic, they were folded and faulted upon collision with the larger North American continent. The oldest strata in the province is the Wairika subterrain of the eastern Klamath terrain, where 640 million year old Ediacaran fossils were found. In the photograph, Ediacaran cyclomedusoids were found within the Antelope Mountain Quartzite. The oldest formation in Oregon it, it are in the Applegate group of the Rattlesnake Creek subterrain of the Western Paleozoic terrain. Within that Applegate group, Triassic Conodont, Conodont index fossils were found. See the inset photo. Conodont index fossils are, were gill support for an eel like fish, and that they placed its age at 210 million years ago. The Western Paleozoic and Triassic belt is 200 miles long and 50 miles wide. It was accreted in middle late Jurassic and rotated to its current configuration during the late Mesozoic to early Cenozoic. It is a volcanic archipelago environment comprised of a collage of cherts, shales, volcanics, and limestones perforated by igneous intrusions. 
It has yielded tropical Jurassic fossil radiolaria in Josephine and Jackson County, Oregon. The May Creek terrain is a metamorphosed ophiolite that has been altered to a high-grade amphibolite suite. The Condre Mountain terrain is a circular exposure projecting from Ashland into California, formed during late Jurassic 146 to 148 million years ago, when a heated oceanic slab and cooler ocean sediments were thrust together and altered to schist. Condre Mountain is composed of an outer green schist layer, a middle graphite-rich black schist, in an inner blue schist core that have all been tightly folded. The heterogeneous rocks of the Rattlesnake Creek terrain represent an ophiolitic melange overlain by ocean arc rocks. The Rattlesnake Creek was covered by the Middle Jurassic Western Hayfork volcanic arc and then intruded by plutons. Rocks of the Western Hayfork are cherts, argillites, and metaandesites. The western Klamath terrain was constructed along the North American margin during the Jurassic Nevada orogeny 155 to 145 million years ago. It includes the Smith River, the Rogue Valley, the Briggs Creek, the Dry Butte, and the Elk subterrains. The most important is the Smith River that has been the focus of considerable attention because of its paleo environment and economic minerals. The Josephine Ophiolite is covered by three mile thick sandstone and shale deposits in the Galice Basin. Although within 12 miles of each other, two Oregon Ophiolitic belts may have different sources. The Josephine Ophiolite developed during rifting of a basin occurring close to the western margin of North America, while the Coast Range Ophiolite may have more exotic origins. Ophiolites are layers of ocean crust developed in back arc or inner arc basins. Reaching thickness of three miles, they follow a remarkably set pattern in structure and composition. The porous and fractured pillow lavas are percolated with mineral-laden superheated seawater that promote massive base metal sulfide deposits enriched with silver, gold, platinum, iron, copper, and zinc. Nickel and chromite are associated with the dunite pods of the, at the bottom of the sequence. Basalt, gabbros, and related ultramafics are typically altered to form low-grade metamorphic rocks such as greenstone and serpentinite. The latest thinking is that whole ophiolite suites usually form in back arc spreading centers adjacent to active volcanic arcs and in proximity to continental land masses. This is called the supra-subduction model. The onset of subduction is initiated with hinge rollback in the invasion by the upper mantle. As, subduct, as subduction continues, the back arc basin spreading center produces ocean crust, ophiolite, behind an active volcanic arc. Then this crust is thrusted or abducted onto the continental landmass as part of the Klamath terrain. The Smith River subterrain formed far to the south at tropical latitudes before being transported to its present position in southwest Oregon. Formed within the Glace Inner Arc Basin, the Josephine is one of the world's largest and most complete ophiolite sequences. Rich in magnesium and iron and altered to serpentine in most exposures, the Josephine is famous for its sulfide minerals that have enriched the mining districts on the southern Oregon border. Sediments of the overlying Galice, or Galice formation were derived from two sources. One, thick turbidites were deposited by river systems off of the previously accreted terrains, and two, from sediments shed from the rogue Chetco volcanic arc. The inset photograph shows layered and foliated whirlites ultramafic rocks consisting of olivine and clinopyroxene. 
from the lower crust of the Josephine Ophiolites. The imbrication of the Rogue Valley, Briggs Creek, and Dry Butte subterranes preceded deformation of the rocks during the Nevadan orogeny. Rogue Valley rocks consist of undersea volcanic flow and ash of the upper Jurassic Rogue Formation overlain by shells and sands of the Galice Formation. The Briggs Creek subterrain includes folded and altered garnet bearing amphibolites and was the basement on which the Rogue River volcanic arc was built. The Dry Butte subterrain rocks were thrusted under the Briggs Creek and they are igneous plutons. The Elk Subterrain, also known as the Elk Outlier, is the youngest subterrain in the western Klamath terrain. Sandy turbidites, shales, and andesitic lava of the lower Elk Subterrain underlie high-energy marine gravels. Broken mollusks and plant fragments in these stratas indicate a high-energy water environment along a rocky coast like we see today at Yakuna Head. Coastal and tectonically displaced terrain, also called the Snowy Camp, Picket Peak, Yali Bali, Gold Beach, and Sixes River, are small coastal subterrains of the Franciscan and Dolphin belts of the southwest Oregon terrains. These terrains were thrust beneath the western Klamath terrain from latest Jurassic to Cretaceous 150 to 75 million years ago. The Snow Camp is disjunct which means marked by separation from usually contiguous rocks, group of rocks that include the Coast Range Ophiolite, the Late Jurassic Volcanics, and Cretaceous Conglomerate Sands and Silts. Above the Paradise Lodge on the Rogue River, the Blossom Bar Shear Zone, which cuts through the Coast Range Ophiolites, creates some of the most difficult rapids for rafters. The one-half-mile shear zone consists of crushed ophiolites that were heavily altered by intense pressure. The photo on the left are folded radiolarin chert, a deep-sea deposit of the ophiolite suite of the Yalibali subterrain of the coastal and tectonically displaced terrain. In the photo on the right, a melange zone is visible within the Otter Point sandstone of the Gold Beach subterrain. Late Mesozoic alternating sandstone and siltstone overlay the coast range Ophiolites. One can find Buccia clams and ammonites in the formations. As they were accreted or annexed to North America, terrains of the Klamath Mountains were subjected to episodic clockwise rotation, intrusion by plutons, and faulting. The model above was an early interpretation of the movement and rotation of the Blue Mountain terrain, the Klamath terrain, and the Northern Sierra terrain. Comparing the paleomagnetic data from the same terrains, Edward Mankinen and William Irwin demonstrated that most rotation took place when the various terrains were offshore and before they were annexed to the North American continent. A smaller degree of tertiary rotation was due to the subduction of the Juan de Fuca plate and to the basin and range extension. Igneous stitching plutons, which cooled and crystallized at depths, intruded all belts of the Klamath Mountains, binding the terrains together. Plutons vary in size from less than one square mile to more than 40 square miles. The larger plutons occur at converging and diverging tectonic plates, and the smaller are in place where magma intrudes, fractures and rocks are along rifts where brittle crust has been stretched and thinned. The oldest plutons in the Klamath Mountains are the Fork of the Salmon in California and Squaw Mountain in Oregon. One of the rare plutons occur in the Josephine Ophiolites in the Calameopsis wilderness that were once part of the upper mantle. An ophiolite is a section of Earth's oceanic crust in the underlying upper mantle that has been uplifted and exposed above sea level 
and abducted onto continental crustal rocks. In the photo on the left, olivine-rich peridotites or dunite host deposits of chrome. These are called cumulate peridotites or dunite rich layers of minerals that settled out from a magma chamber. They were then exposed by uplift of a small microplate of oceanic basin onto the continent. In the photo on the right, vegetation grows sparsely on the peridotite and similar rocks near Vulcan Lake. At the end of the Jurassic and into early Cretaceous periods, thrust faulting and folding accompanied terrain collision. Historically, the mountain building episode have been called the Nevadan orogeny because it was thought to be synchronous with similar events in the Sierra Nevada region further to the south. This image illustrates ocean waters advanced eastward during the Cretaceous period, bringing open marine environments across western and central Oregon and providing habitats for many marine fauna. During late Cretaceous and early Cenozoic accretion and rotation of Silesia to the continent, a lengthy shelf subsided west of the emerging Cascade volcanic arc and north from the Klamath Mountains to British Columbia. The basin filled with muddy deep sea fans and turbidites of the Eocene Taiyi formation and a thin veneer of mica-rich silts and sands of the Looking Glass Flournoy formations. Continued uplift of the Klamaths pushed the shoreline northward and further restricting the seaway. The Peneplain is a low relief plain representing the final stage of fluvial erosion during times of extended tectonic stability. The existence of Peneplains and Peneplanation as a geomorphological process is not without controversy due to lack of contemporary examples and uncertainty in identifying relic examples. However, an erosional surface was noted by Joseph Diller in his mapping of over 1,000 square miles of tertiary sediment and structure. He proposed that during late Miocene, there was a level peneplain from Northwest California to Southwestern Oregon. He based his concept on even topography of the summits and ridges, which he saw as evidence of a unily, uniformly highly dissected platform. Diller's work was affirmed by Porter Irwin in 1997. The principal mineral-rich regions in the Klamath Mountains are located near Galice and Silver Peak in the Greenback District near Ashland, in the Gold Hill Applegate Waldo area, and in the Chetco River watershed. Except for the Sixth River coastal mine, all of these utilize both load and placer workings. Long recognized for its mineral wealth, the Klamath province has productive deposits of gold, silver, copper, nickel, and chromite. Water usage began in 1850 by miners who diverted streams to their diggings via lengthy wooden flumes and ditches. Over 75% of the gold in the Klamath Mountains came from stream deposited placers where the gold in the placer deposits was washed out of gravels by hydraulic methods. At Jacksonville, gold occurs in dense, discrete pockets close to the surface. The riches of these, Gold Hill, the ore was so concentrated the miners difficulty, had difficulty breaking the rock. David Briggs in the image holds a chunk of nearly pure gold. The vein went back about 15 feet and produced about $700,000 in 1904. The process of ore extraction called heap leaching was used in Oregon until 1995 when the Silver Peak mine went bankrupt. A solution of sodium cyanide is sprayed on the tailings to extract the metallic ore. Ten years passed before attention was focused on the millions of gallons of acidic waters draining annually from the waste piles. After concerted effort 
by those pesky no good environmentalists, the site was declared a Superfund site in 2007. The Queen of Bronzebine was discovered in 1860 near Waldo in Josephine County. The mine exploited the Turner Albright sulfides within the Josephine Ophiolites. It was the second largest copper producing mine in Oregon. This image is a reconstruction of the paleo environmental setting of the Turner Albright massive sulfides. Hydrothermal deposits precipitated when superheated mineral laden seawater solutions circulated through fractures and faults to emplace the ores. Mine near Riddle from weathered peridotite, nickel was one of Oregon's most important economic minerals. From deep within ophiolite layers, peridotites decompose quickly upon surface exposure, forming a nickel-rich lateritic residue that is relatively easy to excavate. One of the geologic highlights of the Klamath Mountains in Oregon are the Oregon Caves that were formed from marble in the Applegate Group. The cave rises about 200 feet from the entrance to the exit. Table Rock is located a few miles north of Medford, where there are two prominent flat top mesas that stand about 800 feet above the valley flow. It has been designated an area of critical concern. Seven million years ago, lavas from Olson Mountain filled the upper canyon of the ancestral Rogue River, then spread through the wide Medford Valley. After erosion during Pliocene and Pleistocene, the inverted topography stands out in relief. Another geologic highlight is Battle Rock, named for a conflict with Native Americans in 1851. Settlers took refuge atop the projection that rises from 30 to 40 feet above the water until they could safely retreat to Reedsport. Humbug Mountain in the background is the highest point on the southern coast where coarse bed of boulders grade upward into sandstone to form the early Cretaceous Humbug Mountain conglomerate. I hope you enjoyed this lecture of the Klamath Mountain Physiographic Province. As you may have noticed, it, it, is, it is extremely complicated and deserves more study. I leave you with this image of Mac Arch, a field of sea stacks and an arch that make up Mac Reef south of Crook Point that are eroded features of the Otter Rock Formation. Mac Arch is a 325 foot high monolith and is the remnant of a reef through which a tunnel was eroded by persistent wave action.